Most High Yah. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. Give glory and honor to him because we are in the earth and he is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We give him praise this morning for another opportunity to come before you and just share some of the word with you and to pray with you and hopefully be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. We come humbly before the Most High this morning because we know that his will will be done with or without us. And what we need to do is focus on being a part of his plan, being a part of his work in the earth realm to bring about his kingdom on the earth and to bring citizens into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. So that they too might be saved from the wrath that is to come. So let's give praise to the most high. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We praise you for this opportunity, Father, to give you praise while we are yet in the earth, while the breath is still in our body, the blood is still running warm in our veins, Father, while we're still clothed in our right mind. We give you praise, Father. We come humbly before you. Father, we come asking for your wisdom, your, your understanding and your direction, oh, Heavenly Father. Order our steps that we would not slip and fall with the wicked. We pray for those, Father, that are yet seeking, that yet lack the understanding, whose eyes have not yet been opened, Father, that you would open their eyes and allow them to see this revelation of who you are and who your people are and what our purpose is in your plan. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And all the saints of Yah said, Amen. 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 Well, today family, we're going to be talking a little bit about the nature of our father, the nature of our God, because we see what's happening in the world. We know, we understand that we're in the midst of it right now, that there is no escape. Like the scripture said, it's like a woman when she goes into labor, (laughs) there's no turning back. (laughs) You know, there's only one way to finish this thing and that's give birth. So what I'm saying to Israel, there's once the birth pains hit us, There's only one way to finish this thing. We got to produce. We got to produce what Yah has formed in us. We have to get that baby out. Amen. So we need to understand we're going to go through some pain. We're going to go through some trauma. We're going to have lots of discomfort in this time. This is Jacob's trouble. We're in the midst of it. And all eyes, all the eyes in the world are on us right now. Because they know that we are the focal point. We are the the firebrand, the lightning rod that Yah has placed in the world to test the nations of the world. How they treat us is how Yah will judge them. And we've seen from past how they have treated us. So they are revealing their own character through their own actions and through their own words. We don't have to judge anyone. All we have to do is sit back and let Yah handle his business. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be going to the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 89, and we're going to pick up at verse number 14. And we're going to just take a look at a a snapshot of Yah's character. We know that his character is is unchanging, that there is no shadow, shadow of turning, no variableness with him, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a lot of people want to think, oh, the, 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 the Yah or the God of the Old Testament was so mean and so cruel and so strict. And then they say, well, we like this New Testament version of him. I'm here to tell you that it's the same Yah. He just cut you some slack in the New Testament. He opened a door of, of grace and mercy for you to get out of the punishment that was coming. Amen. So we need to run to him and be saved. We can't keep standing outside talking about uh, the old version is done away with and we don't have to worry about that anymore because we see from what's happening in Revelation that he's still a God of wrath. But the scripture says he's long suffering, not willing. He doesn't want this. He doesn't want to have to judge and cast people out in the outer darkness and into Sheol, into hell. Come on. He said, I'm waiting for you to make a make a change, waiting for you to turn around, waiting for you to repent, to see the wickedness of your ways. Amen. And come back to me so I can heal you. And that's where we are right now, Israel. We're coming back to him. We've repented. We're coming back to him. We're on our faces. We're crying out. We messed up. Receive us. You know, by your grace, receive us. 
And then when he receives us, we can't go back and think that we can still do the things that we used to do. Because that's the same thing that got you in the trouble you're in today. Right. Amen. Amen. All right. Psalms chapter 89, verse 14. Let's read. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Justice and judgment is the foundation. Yah is a God who is just in everything. Some people think, oh, that was not fair what Yah did to this group of people here or how he handled this situation. Well, remember, he says, my ways are what? Not your not ways. Your way. They're higher than your ways as the heaven is higher than the earth. You don't understand the whole situation. You don't understand the repercussions and the ripples that will happen throughout history and time if I'd have done it your way. If he did everything our way, the way we see it and the way we call it, then the world would be in a lot worse shape than what it's in right now. He is a just God. He's a just God. Elohim. He's not going to do something that's not going to produce fruit and it's not going to produce righteousness and come out in the end that we win. We're on the upper upper end of that thing. Amen. So what he's saying is my foundation, the foundation of everything I do is just, it's fair, it's right, it's equal. Come on. It's got to have balance. He said if it's not balanced, he said he does, he don't do it. So when we do one thing, we think, oh, we got punished too much for that thing. Y'all said, mm, mm-hmm. you got your just reward. Amen. And when we come before him in the final judgment, it's going to be our just reward. He's not going to give you something that you uh, did not deserve. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people thinking when I get to heaven, he's just going to lavish me with all these rewards and lavish me with all these gifts. You better be just hoping you get in, for, for <laughs> first of all. Amen. First of all, just hoping that you make it in and then the rewards and stuff like that. He's not going to give you rewards for something you didn't do. He said, if you're a servant and you do what he tells you to do, you will be rewarded. He's just there are no participation trophies in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, just because you were here, you called yourself an Israelite and then he's going to reward you for that. No, he said every man will be rewarded according to his deeds. And that's That's Yah's perfect justice. Why? Because the nations, the heathen nations will be judged according to their deeds and the Israelite nation will be judged judged according to what? Their deeds. He's fair. He's equal. All right. Y'all hearing it? And he said, I'm the same. I I don't change. Don't expect me to. The only people that we should be expecting to change is us. us. We're the ones. Human beings have the problem, not Yah. Human beings have the problem because human beings have a problem. They have a problem with their sin nature, the the rebellion that's in their heart. And Yah is revealing that both in his people and in the nations. Are y'all hearing me? He said, I'm going to bring that thing out. You're not going to be able to hide from it. Your sin will find you out. There's nothing that you have done that's going to be hidden. It's coming out because Yah is a, a, a God of revelation. Apocalypse, he likes to pull the veil back from things. He said, now, would he pull it back? Let that be your past, not your present. Are y'all hearing me? Let that be something that you used to be, that you were, but not something you are and still do it. You were a liar. Let's 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 put it like that. Right. You were an adulterer. You were a fornicator. You were in times past, but that's your past. Now you've moved on to your precious and glorious destiny in Mashiach, in the Messiah. And you should be thanking him for that opportunity, the door that he opened, because he's getting ready to make all things just and fair and balanced and equal. Amen. Amen. So he said, don't worry about the uh, inequities in the world. Don't worry that you've been on the bottom. He says, because I'm about to flip it. Don't worry that you've been the poor because I'm about to flip it over in Uganda. They just discovered something like 300 and some million tons of gold. He's about to flip it. All the Western nations have been using their fake wealth. Their fiat currency, paper, paper, greenbacks. And now he's giving his people in his promised land, his covenant land. He's giving them the true wealth, real riches, a land flowing, come on, with milk and honey, where there is gold 
Come on. He told you. He said in that promised land, there's gold. He said that's 12, that's 12, almost 13 trillion dollars worth of wealth in that one country. Don't you know there's still undiscovered wealth in all these other countries? Yes. He's trying to get us to focus on home, the motherland, because that's where our promised blessing is. It's not in the nations of our captivity. It's not with the people that hate us and despise us and kill us and think that they're doing God a service. It's not with those people. The people that we're supposed to be with are our own people. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. And that's where he's going to bless us. And that's where he's going to bring us up as a people. That's where our healing is. That's where we're going to find that comfort. Amen. Amen. Because history has shown that no matter what nation we're in, it's the same result. Those nations will have to stand and give an account before the almighty Yah. You lynched them, what? You, you incarcerated them for what? You, 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 you redlined them, excuse me? You didn't want them to live in your neighborhood because, you know, all those things they have to give an account of. The things that they keep saying, oh, that's the past. And that's way back when. That's that's not even a hundred years ago. That's that's recent history. That's 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 modern time. We're not talking about something that happened 2,000, 5,000 years ago. We're talking about recent history. Those people are, that did those things are still alive. Many of them still alive today. Yes, sir. Some of them now are your senators. Come on now, your, your congressmen, presidents. Same people that espouse those views that have that that harbored that hatred for you are still in authority. That's why nothing has changed. All right. He's a just God. Let's go. His character is he does not change. So justice, Yah's justice is coming. And what he's trying to do is give people a, war, a, a, a warning ahead of time. He's giving them a heads up saying, look, this is coming. It's not going to stop. You need to just get ready for it and be prepared for it. Amen. And start giving him praise and start treating your brothers and sisters the way you're supposed to treat them, that you're supposed to be loving them and you're supposed to be treating them fairly. You're not supposed to be uh, targeting them, killing them, incarcerating them. Come on, people. These are some things we shouldn't even have to have a discussion about. If you say you still have, you have the same Holy Spirit that I have, but yet your Holy Spirit tells you it's all right to hate and all right to incarcerate and oppress and afflict other people. But my Holy Spirit says, no, that's wrong and it's evil and it's wicked. So somebody ain't got the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody don't have the Holy Spirit that they claim to have. Right. Somebody is not doing what Yah is leading them to do because you can't be going in two opposite directions and say you're both being led by the same Holy Spirit. You're headed for darkness and evil and I'm headed for light and good. And you saying we're both going in the same direction. That ain't that ain't that ain't Yah. He's not the author of confusion. He's he doesn't like people who are double minded, who have two different standards for the same people. All right. Amen. All right. Let's move on. Let's go to the next scripture. Okay. That is. Psalms 82, uh -huh. 1 through 4. All right, go ahead. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Mm -hmm. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. You see again? And throughout the book of Psalms, you're going to find y'all talking about justice and judgment, judicial system seeking justice. And all you find is just us, you know, that that you go down there and everybody who's being charged with a crime or uh, doing something wrong was our folks. You look around the courtroom, it's full of us. You wait, wait, wait a minute. White folks ain't committing no crimes. They're not being called before the judge to be ju to get justice. You know that we knew that that was something. Uh, unfair and unbalanced about this system. Are you understanding? Yah said, no, I don't want a system like that where these people get the short end of the stick and these people get all the stick. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Yah said, that's not fair. He's the God of justice. He wants everything fair. I remember when uh, computerized typewriters first came out <laughs> and I was amazed that, you know, you could type and you have some long sentences and some short sentences and some have this way and the page looked all over the place. But you could hit a button on those new typewriters and say justify. 
and justify with balance. Come on, y'all. Balance it would balance out. everything. Everything would become equal and even, mm -hmm. and it would look beautiful. Wouldn't it look beautiful yes. if everybody treated everybody the same? Yeah. If everybody would love everybody the way y'all said we ought to love everybody, if everybody would take the biblical definition of love and stop having their own definitions of love and say, well, love is love. Well, love ain't all love ain't equal. Right. Some people say they love you while they're killing you. Some people say they love you while they're beating you up. Some people say they love you while they're kicking you out. Le releasing the dogs on you, turning the hoes on you. While they say, I, we love you, but you just, you can't stay here. You can't be with us. That's not love. And Yah was trying to demonstrate that through his scripture, he's saying that those people that say one thing, they say they love, but they do another. He said, that's a hypocrite. You can't say you love him and then won't obey him. Right. He says hypocritical. He, he says, so just stop doing the things that are, don't stop faking it and stop, start living it. Stop, stop acting it and start being real. That this is who you are when the camera's on or when the camera's off, when you're in front of the public or when you're behind closed doors. Right. You know, love is love. Well, some people say they love animals in, in a amorous way. Is that equal? Some people say they love 19 year old children. Is that equal? Mm -hmm. Some people say, I love a tree. I want to marry the tree. Some people, I love the ocean. I want to marry the ocean. You know, where does it stop? All love is not equal. All love is not just and right in the eyes of Yah. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. See, this is how we've gotten to the problem we are in right now. Because once you accepted one definition that love, this kind of love is okay, then it opens the door. Well, why come this kind of love? ain't okay and how come this kind of love ain't okay no because they that first one you you, you let slide through it wasn't okay yeah. i know y'all know what i'm talking about so i don't have to <laughs> i don't have to break it down to you yeah, like, yeah. i don't want to get no strikes you know i'm i'm just i just got on here but those that have an ear let them hear you understand it you know what i'm talking about but there are some people that it just goes right over their head well, how can he sing this kind of love? All love is good love. That's like saying all food is good food. Good food. Uh, nope. We all know that's not true. Mm -hmm. We know some folks can cook, some, some folks can't. We know some things are edible and good for food and some things ain't. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? So you have to have a discernment and make judgments which bring about justice, that it's fair. Well, every man needs a woman that's fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One has his, his, his counterpart. Amen. You can't sit there and say that, uh, mm, no, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because I got other scriptures I need to deal with. And I'm really not here for that. Because see, we hear, look, saints, we hear a lot about the love. Of Yah in his character. He he's a God of love. He loves everyone. He's he's everlasting love and he's his love is perfect. And we hear a lot about his love. We hear a lot about his holiness. He's sanctified, he's set apart, he's unique, he's different from every other God. We understand that. We 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 get we get it. We got that. But when you start talking about Yah is just, you know, not a whole lot of people hear that. Right. Because if he, if they start talking more about his justice, then then more people will start trying to execute his justice instead of saying those things that happened to you long ago and the things that we did that were wicked and so forth that that's okay because it's under the love. It's no that love cover you know that love is one thing, but his justice is another thing. You can't exclude one for another. Like Messiah told the Pharisees, he said, you should have paid tithes of your mint and cumin and anna. And you should have paid your tithes on that, but you should not have left these other things undone. You should have had justice and mercy. And these things go, they're not, they're not exclusive of one another. They're all part of the same thing. You got to take the whole gospel. You can't take a piece of it and walk away talking about, I got it. No, you got to have it all. The whole gospel. Amen. Amen. All right. Where are we at? Uh, Deuteronomy. All right. Let's go Deuteronomy 32, uh, verse 4. Go ahead. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. 
Yes, they are. A faithful are. God who yes. does no wrong, upright and just is he. He's upright and just. So why was he telling the, the Israelites this? Because he said, what I am, he says, be ye holy, because what? I am holy. Love your brothers, because I love your brothers. <laughs> so he's saying, you got to duplicate what you see in me. You got to mimic what you see in me. You can't mimic what you see in these nations and these heathens that say they love and then they don't love. They say one thing and they do another. We've had enough of that kind of stuff, even in the, the Christian churches that we've come out of and, and, and no longer associate and affiliate with. He's saying because they say, but they don't do. They say love and they say unity and they say acceptance. And what you get? No love, no <laughs> unity no acceptance. and no acceptance. You know, the same people that's up there laying hands on you and greasing you up with the anointing all is the same folks that's going to go talk about you after service. All right. All right. That's not that's not that's not carte blanche. Come on. Right. You know that there are some that there are some some places and some people that are very loving and very kind, and very accepting and sweet and all that good stuff in general. I'm making a general statement because I've been around ministry for over 30 years and I've been in and out of churches of all denominations. I preached in them. I fellowship with them. And what I see is I see a superficial varnish coat of religion. Like Messiah said, on the outside, you're clean. And you look good, but inside mm -hmm. you're full of dead men's bones. I was sitting in a meeting with a bunch of pastors up in uh, Northern California, where, matter of fact, in the same area that I'm in right now, we're up in uh, the Sacramento El Grove area. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Shout out Hallelujah. to all my saints, my family okay. out, Sacramento El Grove area. Amen. And it was up in this area. We had come to visit a church and I remember it was some kind of a giant barn, you know, there was some kind of called some barn or something. It was many years ago. So don't don't fault me on the name. And he was a mega church and we were meeting with the pastor. And we remember him uh, as a, a one of the sex uh, secretaries walked by. He he did this, you know, and followed her by. And I, I said, man, this is like what we used to do when we were in the world on the street. And we said, excuse me. And he said, oh, I'm saved, but I ain't perfect. And we was like, you just got you just got through preaching a message and a sermon. Then we go in the back room with some Baptist ministers and so forth. And I'm not, don't say all Baptists. I'm not, I'm just giving you the real, what the story was. Go in the back room with them and everybody in there is talking about all these different things. About their secretaries, about affairs that they're having, about how much money they have, how many members they have. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, man, we got about, what, 50 members? And these guys are talking hundreds and thousands and I'm sitting there going, I feel bad. But then I asked myself, I asked myself a question. I said, you know, they sit up here talking about things that are considered sin, you know, things that are considered wrong and unethical. And they are flourishing and growing. And I said, here I am sticking to my guns and standing on holiness and standing on we should obey the most high and preaching truth and faith and love and all. And I said, Lord, I'm doing all these things that I see in scripture and I believe in. And know they're right. And these guys is not doing, but they blow it up. And here I am, slow growth. We he's slow growing, you know. And the master had to show me and demonstrate to me after that that yeah, sometimes these things are growing, but it's not always his hand right. causing the growth. Mm -hmm. Just because you see growth and popularity, that doesn't mean that Yah is in it. Say amen. amen. Just because you see a whole lot of people following it don't mean that Yah is leading. Come on now. People are sheep. They're going to follow. They're going to go where they see crowds, where they feel excitement. And they could be a part of something big. But guess what? The road that leads to hell is, come on, <laughs> it's wide. And many there be a part. <laughs> so you want to go with the crowd because it's exciting. You're with a lot of people and you think that it, the, the, the majority got to be right. No, you got to have your own so salvation worked out. This is a solo thing. This is an individual thing. Come on now. And y'all's trying to tell you I'm a God of justice. That stuff that they did back there, that they think is not coming back up, it's coming back up. Amen. Amen. All right.
I know I'm running on tangents this morning. Okay. Let's 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 move on to our last scriptures. Okay. So next one is Joel. All right, Joel chapter 2, verse 17. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. Yeah. All right, when you get there, you go ahead, read. Okay, all right. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep mm -hmm. between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? This is what they're saying now. Mm -hmm. Because of all that we've been through as a people, all the different captivities, Babylon, Roman, Syrian, American, <laughs> Arab, all these things that we've been through as a people and in every place we've been through and been oppressed in, they're saying, these people look at us and see how downtrodden we are and how poor we are and how we can't get up and how we can't come together and unite and how we can't, you know, keep our resources and can't own homes and business. They look at us and say, where is their God? Well, he, he, uh, he must have abandoned them. That's why they do the things that they do to us because they think Yah cursed us and abandoned us and he's through with us. But Yah said he would never abandon his people. Right. I will never leave you. Or ever forsake you. I will restore again the fortunes of Judah. Come on, in Israel. He said, I'm going to bring you back up. And see, right now, 2015, I'm telling you, folks, start waking up, start seeing this thing for what it is. And we start seeing religion for what it is. That it was nothing more than a matrix and a box to keep us locked in and captured and, you know, and used and pimped out. Uh, come on now, Amen. to be a resource and to make merchandise of us. They, you know, and they make millions and millions of dollars and build beautiful edifices and do all these wonderful things, but it ain't benefiting us as a people, as a whole. Because if they took all that money and put it into a, a, a pool, and the millions and millions of dollars, they, we would have been out of this thing a long time ago. Right. But everybody's building their own individual kingdoms. Apart from his kingdom. This is what we should be praying. Joel chapter 2 verse 17. Don't, don't forsake us. Don't, don't let these heathens get the victory over us. Don't, don't, don't let us become a, a reproach and, and a shame and, and, and be a, a byword. The N word is a byword. Spook, spear chucker. Those are bywords. Right. And that's what we have. Come on. That's what we have become. But we need to start praying the word as we were taught in the word of faith movement. Pray the word. I don't want my kids to grow up. I don't want my grandkids to grow up being called the N word, be called a by word, you know, spooks, beer, sugar, guitar, baby, all these things. Oh, you ain't nothing and you never will be nothing or labeled as a criminal even before they even know who you are. Right. Pull you over just because they see how you look. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you, I've been pulled over dozens of times just driving through a neighborhood, breaking no laws. Just pull you over because they look at you and go, oh, they don't belong here. Come on now. Amen. That ain't just. That's not justice. That's all you see is them just targeting us. Then try to turn it around and say, well, you're the problem. Well, why are we the problem when we're the ones who are always being oppressed and victimized? How is that? How do you work that out in your head? You put us in the situation. When you came and got us, we weren't in ghetto. Right. Amen. When you came and got us, we didn't have the high divorce rate and out of wedlock childbirth. We, when you came and, my God, if you don't listen this morning. When you came and picked us up, we had civilizations. We had universities. We had higher learning. We had advanced technology. We had all that stuff going on when you came and got us. What did you do to us? What transformed us into kings and priests and, and royal courts and all these wonderful things we had going on? What transformed us into what you see now? Sagging and gangbanging and slanging, being disrespectful to authority and our parents. What, what transformed us? You did that. There was a mind game played on us like no other people in the world. They talk about MK Ultra, Man, they must have did MK Ultra Ultra on us. <laughs> When you know what I'm saying? They, they they did some things to us that make us hate ourselves and love our mm, 
oppressor. That we think all of what they say and do is right and, and, and good and untouchable and what they speak is authority and law. You got to accept it. But when we speak to our own folks, they look at us sideways. What's in it for you? Only thing that's in it for me is the freedom, the liberation of my people, the, the liberation of us as a nation, the restoration of our people. That's the only thing in it for me. There's, there's not enough money in the world. Not enough prestige and honor in the world to make me change what I'm saying and doing right now. I want to be walking with Yah as he restores his people, as those dry bones come together and there's skin and sinew and flesh. Come on. That's the only thing I want to see is us back on top where we belong. Because that's what Yah said. I'll make you the head, not the tail. But they've taken it. The world took it. And they out there proclaiming themselves to be the, to the head. When Yah said, that's for my chosen people. That's what, that's your role. That's your position. And you've abdicated that and gave it up to everybody but yourself. And ain't that like us? We give to everybody and help everybody else get up, but we stay down. Right. We'll, we'll kneel down and let everybody else use us as a step ladder to get up higher. Yeah. And then they abandon us and leave us. Yep. But we just walk happy, walk away happy that we help somebody. We need to help ourselves. Charity come on, yes, begins at home. home. We need to first preach here to our people and get them restored before we be out there trying to restore the nations. Mm -hmm. We can't tell them how to get it together unless we come on. Unless we get it together. Unless we first got our feet on solid ground. How are we going to tell everybody else, y'all will put you on solid ground. <laughs> yeah. And they look at you. Y'all will bless you financially. And they look at you. Y'all will, will make your families tight and knit together. And they look at you. What's the divorce rate in, in the church? Yeah. What, what's the poverty rate in the church? We need to be praying Joel 2.17 with all sincerity. There's other scriptures that, that talk about us being in this situation and that, that if we call on the name of Yah with a repentant heart, a broken and a contrite spirit. He said, then he would hear, when you seek me with your whole heart, why? You got to want that justice to come. Because what's been done to you for centuries has been injustice after injustice. You seek justice from the Supreme Court of the land of your captivity. And they say, you're not even a human being, so we don't have to, we don't have to do anything for you. We want to bring justice to you, you're not human. But what about when they won't let us live here? Well, you were never supposed to be here in the first place. So why should we give you rights? See, and all this stuff that you see that has happened, happened on purpose. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't happenstance. And the, 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 the prisons being full of our folk, that ain't a, a, an accident. That's not a happenstance. Us being on the bottom in, in, in financial matters, it's not an accident. These things were orchestrated. They, they conspired against us to keep us down because once we rise, y'all said they have to fall. And see, that's the thing people don't understand about knowing who the bloodline descendants are and who the covenant promises were to. That's what they don't understand. They don't understand that in order for us to be on top, that somebody gonna have to be on the bottom for us to win somebody gonna lose for us to be number one somebody gonna be number two you see and that's what the world the gentiles don't want us to relinquish power to the chosen but it's but let's look at it like this they've been in power all this time is the world a better place is the world cleaner are that birds singing animals happy are the waters pollution free? Is the air pollution free? Is, has, has justice reigned like water covers the sea? No, he said, but when his people are back in power, he said, that's when it will occur. When the righteous are in power, what? The people oh, rejoice. rejoice. How many of y'all rejoicing this morning? How many of y'all <laughs> shouting when you go to the gas pump? How many of you yeah. shouting when you go to the store? Yeah. How many of you are shouting when you have to work that job and you're working overtime just to make enough money to keep mm -hmm. staying alive and just to live on a daily? Come on now. When I y'all mean, said that's way that's their system. And it's not an equitable 
just, balanced system. When 1% of the people control 99% of the wealth, that's not equitable, y'all. Y'all said, now we wouldn't, he said, if you were in power, you would be like, no, no, everybody need to have food. Everybody need to have a place to stay. Everybody need to work. Everybody need to do what they need to do, live more holy lives. And, you know, uh, we, would, we wouldn't have a lot of this mess that we have going on if y'all's righteous people in their righteous mind made righteous decisions and righteous judgments and then carried those things out. You were the salt of the earth. Supposed to change things. You're, you're the light. You're supposed to illuminate things. You're supposed to bring things into view that they can see it clearly. Amen. You're not here just to shout, get goosebumps, pay your tithes, and get pressed down, shaking together and running over. You know, that's what they have reduced the message of the kingdom to. It's about getting material things and about getting money. I know because I preached it for a long time. Come on now. Preached it for a long time. And it was all about you want God to bless you. Come on over here. Get in the thousand dollar line. Get in the ten thousand dollar line. You want to get a big blessing? You got to give a big seed to meet your need. Come on now. And we go through, we go say, oh, she getting she getting tuned up now. We had all those formulas down, but they weren't formulas from the scripture. They were formulas from men's hearts. Because you can see whether when he talked to the Pharisees about tithes, what was it? Cumin, spices, herbs. That's what he was talking about of your, 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 your first fruit, your crop. That's what you were tithing on. It was never money. They'll say, well, your money is equivalent. No, quit lying. Uh oh, let me stop. <laughs> Money is equivalent to those things now, is it? Mm -mm. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Yeah, there was no requirement for you to give your money uh, to the church. You know, there was no money to the temple or any of those other things. There was always cattle and sheep and produce and livestock and these sorts of things. But they've reduced it now to money because that's the thing that makes them what the world go around. And the church is now they don't even understand that they have a love for money that. Let me quit. Might get in trouble with some good friends. Uh, <laughs> all right. Joel chapter two. We just finished that up. Let's go to Psalms and I'm going to conclude there. Psalms chapter nine. Um, and we'll pick up at verse number seven. Okay. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for, ju for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for the Lord has never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord, enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done, for he, for he who avenges blood remembers. He does he not. Does what? He remembers. He remembers. All those things they keep talking about, that's the past. Those millions of people that were enslaved, those millions of people that were uh, killed, raped, dismembered. He's, they keep saying, that's the past. He said, I, re I remember. I remember what you did to my people. I remember. You keep wanting me to forget, but I'm not going to forget. So how can I forget my firstborn? How can I forget my, my, my son, Israel? How can I forget Judah? How can I forget? He said, yo, your own mama will forget you before I will forget you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Keep reading. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. The end of verse 12. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mm. mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. Yes. That I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hit. Not here. Hear that. Hear that. Hear it. The nations are snared by their own wicked ways. Right. Y'all said, see, the way you, the way you could take a person and beat them with a bull whip mm. and think that that was right and good and acceptable. He said that you just snared yourself. Your hate, your hate filled ways are going to cause your own soul to be snared. 
See, the things that they were doing to us that they, they thought they could get away with and was OK, like when they would take a man, uh, a man who was in slavery, one of our people who was in slavery, take his wife away from him and say, we're taking her into the house and we're going to have our way with her. And thought that that was right. That was OK because of my position and authority over you. See, if a person in a position and authority over you can will use that authority to oppress you and to hurt you and to do wickedly, then that person shouldn't be an authority. Say amen. amen. That person shouldn't be an authority. If that person will wield power in a destructive manner, that person shouldn't be in power. Right. Yah has all power. Does he go around just blowing up indiscriminately, killing up folks, smashing folks? Because what you going to do about it? No. He said, I'm long suffering. I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you enough rope. Come on. To hang yourself. But all the while I'm telling you, repent, stop, turn around. The same way that I used to do when my kids were small. Stop running. Stop fighting. Do your chores. And I would just sit there and say it over and over again, over and over again. And then I got to a point, then I stand up and when the belt come off, then everybody was ready to repent. <laughs> everybody was wanted to be right. Everybody was contrite. You know, when that, but that's when judgment comes, but it's too late then. The belt ain't going back on until the belt do what the belt got to do. And see, and that's what happened to Israel. The belt that had to do what it had to do. And now Yah didn't put it back on. Now he's telling the heathens, now you see what I did to my own. I'm not going to spare you. Right. If I didn't spare the ones that I chose and handpicked among the nations, why am I going to spare you? You better get right. You better straighten up. You saw your brother get whooped right. <laughs> for doing what you're doing right now. But you think I'm not going to whoop you because you somehow got privilege? Uh-oh. I didn't mean to say that, did I? Yeah. Did I say Did I say that out loud? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you think you got privilege and you think you're special because you you got Jesus. You got the Messiah and your, your church. You're, you're highly favored and blessed. And y'all's trying to tell you if you don't get that mess out your life, and you don't start doing right, not just talking right, doing right, then this judgment that came on them is coming on you. The same judgment for hypocrisy will come rolling at your door. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? So I'm, I'm just trying to tell people they can keep on going the way they want to go, doing what they want to do. But y'all said in the end, it's going to be the same result for the same things. And that's what we see happening all around the world. Judgments are falling, not just randomly. They're falling because there's a purpose behind them. Y'all's trying to save. Y'all don't stop. You see the flood. You see the fire. You see the famine. You see the food supply and drying up. You see these wicked folks and you see the plan that they had. You see what they want to do to you. They're how they want to uh, control you. Do and make everything you do have to be approved by them. You see where they're trying to take you, but yet you just keep going along. No resistance whatsoever. They're in power, so I guess we have to do what they say. Well, if you look back at them Hebrew boys, they said we ain't we ain't doing it. <laughs> you better if you got Hebrew in you, then you got some rebellion in you, and you need to point that rebellion in the right direction. Not rebelling against Yah, but rebelling against this world and the ruler of this world. We're not gonna bow. We're not going, we're not kneeling. No, we ain't doing it. I don't care how long you play the music. <laughs> Some of y'all say them choir, the choir been singing a long time. I don't care. I ain't shouting. Yeah. Till you give me something worth oh, shouting about. Shouting about. Yeah. You know? And see, and a lot of these folk that all won't shout is about it's something for their flesh. If it's something material, then they'll shout. You got a million dollars coming. Ah! They run, they jump, and they shout. God's finna make you holy, finna sanctify you. And they sit there and look at you like that. They ain't excited about spiritual blessings. They're only excited about material blessings. All right? Yeah. All right, come on. Okay, last one, verse 16. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. And wicked are ensnared, the wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. They doing it to themselves, y'all. We're not doing it to them. They sold this. They got to reap it. Mm -hmm. 
They said, well, we sold it, you know, a long time ago. It don't matter to y'all. Y'all, today is as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. doesn't matter how long ago it was. It's coming up. It's going to bear fruit. Now, if you want to uh, circumvent that, he said, you got to truly repent. You got to truly change. Not just, I'm sorry for what we did to you. I'm sorry for what we did to your ancestors. I'm sorry. Y'all said, that's not fixing the problem. That's like you dig a hole 20 feet deep, throw somebody in it and say, I'm sorry. I wish I hadn't done it. Well, can you help a brother out? Can you throw me a rope? No, but here's a sandwich. Here's an apple and a bottle of water. But that don't change my situation. It doesn't change the position that you put me in. Right. Put me behind the eight ball. You put me in a situation I can't dig myself out of. And our future generations can't dig ourselves out of. But you just want to keep on giving us handouts while we in state. As long as you stay in the pit. Because right. if we let you out, you might want to do something crazy. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. Black Panthers, they didn't have it all twisted up wrong, y'all. Yeah. They had many of the right ideas. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. Pastor yeah. said that. Right. Yeah. They had made us into a, a, a generation of just pansies. Just, you know. Mm -hmm. We come from warrior stock, y'all. Yes. David yes. was a warrior king. He, he was a fighter. Come on now. Samson was a fighter. These men were, were, were leaders in warfare. And they, they were, we're going to have our justice. <laughs> you know, we're not going to sit back and just wait on wicked folks to make things right. When you prove and you won't make things right, you got to stand up. And, and I'm not saying everybody go grab a gun and we go march down the street. But there's a way that scripture tells us this. we have to be led by the spirit into our warfare. He teaches us where we should be fighting, where we should be directing our prayers, where we should be, what we should be doing, how we should respond. David said he taught my fingers to fight and my hands to war. He taught. He teach you how to war in the spirit. Do you know how? Yeah. A, lot of this, a lot of these folks that claim to be so spiritual don't know how to fight in the spirit for justice. Be like that widow woman who went before the wicked judge and she demanded justice and she wouldn't stop until she got justice. And the father, his father said, look, that, that, that I ain't wicked like that judge. If you come ask me, there going to be some justice. Right. I'm going to make things right. I'm going to balance their scales. See, they can't tip the scales in their favor and do all this crooked thing to keep you down. And y'all say, I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip. I'm gonna, the only way to balance it is to overbalance it. Not to bring it even. Because yeah. bringing it even don't make it. Won't make it. It won't make up for all the stuff. He had to put you here in order to balance it. See, and that was his plan all along. So that he could put you here. He had to have the other nations put you here. In order to bring balance, this now this is balance because now it's they they got what they got, you got what you, got. and now it's balance. It's like you you take a billion dollars from me, and then and, and four hundred years later you want to pay me back the billion dollars. And I'm saying, man, that's that's not equitable. Because see, with that four that billion dollars, I could have done a lot of things in that yeah. four hundred years. Right. I could have got interest. I could have made loans. I could have bought property. I could have come on, y'all. Yeah. The whole lot of things I could have done with that billion dollar. Now you want to give me back? That's not balance. That's not justice. Just to say, now you have to give me back that plus what I would have, what I could have gained during that time. See, that's how he's going to bless Israel and exalt Israel. Is because what we lost during all these centuries. Of captivity, he said, I got to restore with the locusts. But these demon spirits have eaten up out of your life, what these demon people have eaten up out of your life. I got to restore that to you. And all that you could have gained during that time and what the possibilities were, I got to give you that. So I thank y'all. My suffering won't be in vain. Hey. And the people suffering, our ancestors suffering won't be in vain. If we hold fast to that which is true, right. Yah has promised us justice is coming. Justice is coming. He said, I'm bringing the, I'm bringing the pain. Come on. He said, and to those who cause pain, I'm bringing pain. Yeah. Those who oppressed, I'm bringing oppression. 
He said, I'm going to mirror back to them what they have reflected to the world. Because they're going to reap what they have sown. And this is the justice that Yah says he's coming. He's, we ought to shout. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get uh, 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 mean. You know, I'm just going to sit back and watch it happen. And the people say, oh, that'll never happen. That's not the nature of you. God and the, keep on talking. Keep on talking. Keep on walking. You're going to walk right into that snare that's been prepared for those who have a wicked heart. Those who do not want to follow the scriptures prescription for true repentance. You know, you want to create your own idea of what repentance is. I'm sorry. That's your idea of repentance. This change is not nowhere in your definition. Restoration is nowhere in your definition. And that's the only definition y'all will accept. He sets the standard. He defines what justice is. You don't. You don't get that benefit. You, you know, he says this is what justice is. You can't come over here and make your own idea. He's the one who determines what's right and what's wrong. He's the one who determines what, how to restore someone after you've done them wrong. He's the one. And see, these folks that are sitting up in a lot of these churches have no clue. And they keep walking after the ways of the heathen. They keep walking after the ways of these other nations. And y'all said, that ain't the way my people walk. My people hear my voice. And if you hear him say, this is what you need to do, and you say, well, you know, that all sounds good, but I'm going to just do this. That's not meeting the standard that Yah set. He defined what restoration is. And for Israel, he said, the only true restoration is for them to be the head, not the tail. First and not last. Above only and never, never, never beneath. He said, that's the only thing. That's justice. He said, I define it. Well, it's not fair that they be on top. Who defines it? He said, these people are going to misuse you and mistreat you. I'll send you out there as sheep among wolves. Why? The only way you're going to know if it's a wolf is when he do what a wolf do. <laughs> but that you just made the distinction now that you're a wolf and that's a sheep. That one over there that's bleeding, <laughs> that's the sheep. You the wolf, one over here with the lamb chop in your mouth, smiling. You the wolf. You determine. Now, I know kill the wolf, kill the sheep. Defend the sheep, that that the sheep. Defend him against that wolf that's trying to eat him up, trying to kill him, make him dinner. Are you understanding? So y'all said they're going to do, they're going to create their own future by their own actions. See, so what kind of future are you creating? When you go out and you let people, these people out here that do what they want to do and say what they want to say, they're creating their own future. When they spin lies and they think that it's so wonderful that they could get away with lying so good and deceive people, they think that that's good. See, they've taken that which is evil and made it into something good. And y'all said they're creating their own future because all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. These guys that say, oh, I can go sleep with all these different women in the church. You heard it. And they committing adultery all over the place. Y'all said all adulterers to have their part in the lake of fire. But I believe in Jesus. Well, you be in, in hell believing. Yes. Because believing is true. Believing is doing what he said. He said, if you are my disciple indeed, do what I say. And see, that's the, that's the, the disconnect. People in the I know I make a lot of statements that sound like they're blanket statements, but I'm trying to tell you that a lot of times that what I'm saying to you is, is a general truth. They, they have this emotional belief. You know, their emotions, they believe, but it's disconnected from truth. It's disconnected from logic. It's disconnected from scripture. And you can't have that disconnect. You are to function like this. Grace and truth, peace and mercy. These things work hand in hand. You know, they go together. You can't separate them and compartmentalize them and this pick and choose what you're going to have and what you ain't going to have. Y'all said you take you all, you're all for me or you're all against me. Then you can't serve two masters. He's already told us these things and we got to say, well, if we want his justice in our life. Then we have to serve him completely and totally and without reservation. Without holding back, 
Serve me with your whole heart, mind, strength, soul, body. You know, we can't just keep on going where well, we, we gave him Sunday, child. We didn't, we have church. No, mm -hmm. didn't the choir sang today. Oh, pastor preached today. Ooh, wasn't that good, child? We fed on that today. And then Monday come. Then you go through this transformation. You're not the person you were on Sunday or on Sabbath. You you just out there doing you. You just out there living like the heathen. You're not walking out the scripture. You're not walking out the kingdom. That's the disconnect. There's there's going to be justice come to hypocrites. Justice not just coming to those who reject God, who are atheists, but those hypocrites, those pretenders, those actors, they will also have their just yes. Yes. reward. Amen. All right, family, I'm through. Uh, I just want to uh, remind you to keep keep those ministries, especially the ones that are on Facebook and the ones that are out there publishing materials and bringing forth truth and, and, and digging things out. Bring, you know, keep those people in your prayers because those those people are actually out there on the front lines doing the work and they're getting the bulk of the attacks. Support them not only prayerfully, but if you can support them financially, you know, become a, a monthly supporter. The same way, in, you know, in church, when you gave your tithes and offering, you know, you, you should be supporting these people on a regular basis, consistently, you know, as God enables you, you know, be able to give to others, spread that, spread that message around. Let's get Israel woke. Let's get this justice back on the earth let's get israel back in the position that they're supposed to be in when everything is in the proper position there will be order there will be peace and there will be harmony there will be prosperity but in order to bring that about yah has to have people that are passionate about it and who are willing to support it not just with their mouth but with their wallet same way you supported building fun or children's ministry singles ministry and all these different ministries that you supported you got to do the same thing now but you got to be more vigorous because we're in the end of days and we need to bring these things about and do a quick work because y'all's getting ready to wrap this thing up and we need to understand that our time is not long satan knows his time is short you got to know that our time is short amen, amen. all right father y'all we thank you we praise you we glorify you I thank you for all those, Father, that listened today. I pray that this was a blessing to them. I pray that it would be something that would help them to grow into your kingdom, to grow up in understanding. I pray, Father, they will continue to excel and continue to become the people that you have called them to be, to make an impact on this world, to make a mark that will never be erased. Father, to do something, to let the world know that a child of the Most High has walked the earth in their generations. This I pray in Yahushua's name and all the saints of Yah said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to, God. Glory to God. We give you praise today. God bless you, family. Peace and blessings.